All right, welcome to the next video in our tutorial series on the Behringer Crave. Today we're going to be talking about the envelope section, which is this one right here. We're going to focus primarily, entirely, on how it affects volume when you play a note. Once we understand that, then understanding how the envelope works as a modulation source for other things uh, will make more sense. All right, now I could just describe each of these, but I thought it would be nice to have a little drawing. So we're gonna start very basic. Attack at zero, decay at zero, and the sustain turned up 100%. So if you look at my drawing here, volume knob refers to this. This is the maximum volume output you're going to get. Attack is at zero all the way to the left. Decay is at zero all the way to the left. Sustain is all the way up at 100%. Down here, this is where I press the key. This is where I let it go. And then what I've written here between those things is what's happening. So what's going to happen is the attack is at zero. So that when I press the key, the sound instantly jumps up to the maximum volume. It stays there. And then when I let go, it immediately shuts off sounds like this. Thrilling. Now let's start to make some adjustments to that. If we come over here, we're leaving the attack and the decay at zero, but this time we're going to turn the sustain down a little bit. So instead of it sustaining at the max volume that the knob is set at, it's going to, sust it's going to sustain at a lower volume. But the other actions are the same. It starts right away, and it ends right away. So it's just a quieter sound. So wherever I turn this, <laughs> that will be the volume of the pitch. Okay. So the sustain knob is a level of 0 to 100% of whatever this is. So if I was to turn this up all the way, then the ratio of what this does is the same. It would still either let nothing through or all of it through. All right. Our next one, we're going to start to make some adjustments to the attack knob. We're going to set our attack to something greater than zero. Decay is going to stay at zero. Sustain all the way up. What's going to happen here is this is our main volume. Once I press the key, it's going to take time for the note to get to maximum volume. Then it's going to stay there until I let go. The attack knob is a function of time. So right now it's at zero, that's instant. If I turn this up to all the way, it takes a certain amount of time for that sound to reach its maximum sustained volume. Okay, so that was this one here. I press it, Whoops. <laughs> Press the right button. And it grows to the sustain level. When I let go, it immediately drops away. Okay. Now, remember, the sustain level doesn't have to be maximum all the time. So if I set my sustain lower, the attack will still go to the maximum of the knob, and then it will instantly drop down to the sustain level where it remains until I let go. So I'm going to turn my sustain down to about here, just so you can really hear the difference. Attack is up, so it's going to take a while to get to this point, and then it's going to drop right away to this point. So you heard that drop. It grew all the way and then instantly fell down. Let's try it again. and it remains until I let go. Okay, now we're gonna work with the decay knob instead of the attack knob. So I'm gonna set my attack to zero, and my decay I'm gonna turn up, and I'm gonna set my sustain back to 100%. Now the decay is also a function of time. So at zero, instant decay, all the way up, the longest amount of decay. So when I press this, 
the sound will instantly, attack time zero, shoot up to the sustain level, which in this case is maximum. And then when I let go of the key, the note will last until the decay time is over. So this is when I let go. This is how long the note will continue to sound. So you see it takes the note time to fade away. Next, we're going to set our sustain level to something less than 100%. So at this point, we will still attack instantly to max volume, but then immediately it will begin to decay. And then we'll hit the sustain level, and then I let go of the key, and it will decay again. So the decay comes after the attack and comes after the sustain. Uh, if you're familiar with other synthesizers that may have uh, an ADSR envelope, Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release, this synthesizer has Attack, Decay, Sustain, Decay. Okay, so I'm going to press, I'm going to set my sustain to less than 100%. It will instantly shoot up to the max level, decay to the sustain level, and then decay to zero after I let go. Do that again. Instant full volume, then it decays to the sustain volume, then when I let go it decays to zero. Now it's sustaining, and then it decays. Now our next one is kind of the, the classic example. Our attack time is something greater than zero. Our decay time is something greater than zero. Our sustain is less than 100%, and then we also decay at the end. So this is the very familiar ADSR, but in this case, release is the same as decay. Oh, and I forgot to mark it. This is the key off point. Okay, here it is. Okay, so we can see how these two knobs are a function of time, and this is a function of level. Now, sustain this entire time has been toggled on. If I toggle sustain off, now this knob has no function whatsoever. And the only things that occur are the attack and the decay. That one I've drawn here. So we've set the attack greater than zero, the decay greater than zero, and the sustain toggle is off. So once you press the key, the note will attack time to its max volume and then instantly decay. There is no sustain time. So attack decay, it's similar to this, attack decay, but instead of having this sustain, we immediately are just ending. And if I hold the key after the sound is gone, it makes no difference. The sound will not last longer. There is no sustain. So it doesn't matter how long I hold it, the sound has dropped to zero. Now, the only other thing that I could do, which I did not make a chart for, is I could let go before the decay has completed. But it doesn't matter, because the note will still have its decay. So, regardless of where you press this, uh, it's going to decay at the normal time. Okay, so hopefully that simple explanation of how these four little sections work uh, is helpful and clears some things up. And in our next one, we'll talk about how that can be used to modulate things like pulse width, the oscillator pitch, and the cutoff knob. <laughs>